And um, we're jumping right into our second conversation right now. And we're talking uh, with Pathlight International and we are gonna be learning all about their e-conference summer training. And uh, joining us for this conversation is Consuela Godfrey, who's the director of uh, teacher training, and also Beatrice Arnold uh, Gavan, who is the an associate um, trainer from Belize City. So, uh, good morning, and thank you, ladies, for joining us. Good morning, thank you, thank you, Marlene, and. Uh, we have I, Gavin we with have us this morning. Gavin, yeah. Yes, okay, yes, yeah. uh, Marlene and Gavin. Thank, good morning, everyone. Yeah. Thank you for having us this morning. So very interesting times we're in, and um, I want to I want to ask just how the transition has been for Pathlight International. So you uh, work with students, you work with teachers, and uh, the schools have been closed since March twentieth. So what's been happening on your end? Hi. Yes, um, it's been uh, Marlena. That's a very good question. It's been um, it's been a whirlwind experience for us, but. What I must say is I am happy to, to, to say that Pathlight has actually been uh, very quick to turn around and to be resilient with the lockdown and the quarantine. And what we've done since, uh, around, since the 16th of March actually was to take all our school trainings that we were scheduled to have face to face with, with teachers and with schools this year for the remainder of the, the term and the semester and we've actually managed to transform each and every single one of those trainings into a virtual experience for teachers. And we, we did that pretty much, mm -hmm. I would want to say, almost overnight. Um, both myself and my team, Ms. Beatrice, um, is uh, our associate trainer here in Belize City. And we also have Ms. Maggie Ruiz, who works with us. And she's in Belmopan. And we practically, um, in one weekend, we sat down, we, we got ourselves the training, we needed to use Zoom, we know it's a great platform for training, it offers a lot of different tools and components, um, and basically informed the schools that all the training we have set and scheduled for them that would have been done face to face is now going to be done virtual. And I must congratulate the schools, a lot of them, instead of turning away and said, well, they're not ready for that, they're not prepared to do that, they were willing to try it. They were willing to work with us. And I must say we have had a 100% response back from our schools uh, between the months of March and June. We've had a 100% response back. So there hasn't been a training that we have not had to have because of the virtual aspect of it. We've actually had 100% of our trainings up to date with all the schools we were set to go in and train physically in their schools. So that's a, that, I think that's a great plus for us. Yeah. Yeah. And it, of course, it, it, it fits perfectly in with the theme of uh, this year's, which is helping to shape uh, the future of teaching, uh, 2020 vision. So uh, perhaps talk to us a little bit about that. What is the vision? <laughs> Right. So when I when I originally, you know, I'm, I'm the director, so I'm kind of tasked with putting together the conference every year, um, myself and my team. And I must be I must say I'm thankful that the ladies joined us and in, in joined the team in January. Um, kind of thought about it's you know, this is a new decade. It's a new time in our in our society. We're entering into a new phase of, of who we are as a people. And so I said hmm, it would be a great way to kind of put that together in words that would affect what we do with teachers, because they're ultimately the ones that um, impact education. They're ultimately the ones that form and shape the future citizens of our society. So I kind of toyed around with some words. Um, I know when we look at you know vision, um, when I go to my eye doctor, they keep telling you about 2020 vision <laughs> and having 2020 vision and, 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 and meaning that you can see beyond your, your, your sight is good, but I'm taking it further by saying we can see beyond our path like to seeing beyond 2020. What can we do in education? What can we do through our teacher that would help shape how teachers operate, how teachers react, how teachers respond, how teachers deliver their lessons in the classroom? And I didn't expect that we would have to reinvent and re-innovate how we do that in such a short span of time. I don't think anyone did. And so it actually tied in perfectly, Gavin, with our uh, team in, in the fact that now we are we have reshaped the way that we do teaching, so to speak. We have shaped the way that we deliver training to teachers. And so it, it, it and then the virtual conference that's coming up in at the beginning of July this summer is a testament to that as well. 
you know, your, your summer trainings usually book out very quickly. Um, and that's because of several reasons. One, because of the methodology that you use. You're very interactive and you have a lot of practical sessions with the teachers, but you also um, tend to tap into some of the areas that teachers do know that they need additional uh, training or reinforcement. So I, I'm just thinking, now that you're going online, this means that more people will be able to access the conference? Yes, so this year we've, uh, when we looked at, you know, we can't have the conference because of all the social distancing yeah. rules yeah. and, you know, everything with the pandemic, we, we quickly got on our feet and we said, you know, we, we're going to have to, we really want to not, we really want to pull off our conference. We really want it to still be a success. Yeah. But how are we going to do that when teachers are still adjusting to virtual teaching, T teachers are still adjusting mm -hmm. to online learning um, themselves as, as students? Yeah. And so we sat down and we kind of toyed around with what would be the possibilities of doing this and which, um, you know, when we look at our trainers, when we look at the pool of people, professionals that we've been tapping into these years, are they even ready to deliver what they would normally deliver face to face? Are they even ready to deliver that online or virtually? And I must say, we've had great uh, response from teachers and we've tested it. In, um, and Ms. Beatrice will speak to some of this later on. We've, um, we've been having our virtual independent sessions with teachers every Friday in the month of May and June. When we put out registrations in April, our registration was closed down in about three days because wow. we had total, we had almost 276 teachers register with us in a matter of three days to attend Pat Light's virtual conference. I mean, virtual um, independent sessions in May and June. Mm -hmm. So that kind of gave us a little, the little boost that we needed in, in can we really do this virtually over the summer? And so this summer, we are looking at uh, our platform is Zoom, of course, because that's one of the better platforms that are out there to host so many uh, users at any one given time. Mm -hmm. But we're actually looking at 51 live sessions in a week and we'll be hosting about 500 teachers uh, from early childhood, primary school, high school. And we have about 17 trainers. Some are US-based, some are Belizean-based trainers that will be working with those teachers uh, via platform. So our training sessions are going to be um, simultaneous mm -hmm. um, together. So we're not having it like one, one. We're, we're running three, four sessions at the same time. Teachers will be able to register for any of the sessions that they choose to do in the morning and the sessions that they choose to do in the afternoon. I can tell you, Marlene and Gavin, that so far we've had up our site now for, we opened our link, we, we launched it uh, last week. I think it was last week. Thursday, we launched the link on our Facebook page and we are almost at, because we, we only have a limited amount of space on Zoom. So we are accepting 150 teachers in all different levels. Um, on the Zoom, at different uh, training sessions, we're, we're accepting about 150, and in most cases, we've almost reached 100 for each level, and, and we're, 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 we are not even halfway yet with having our registration link open. So, wow. it, yeah, it's we've been getting very good responses from the teachers. We've had um, teachers from all around Belize asking us about the links, about where to register, how to register. Yeah. So our response to the, our registration response to our conference has been phenomenal, and we've been we've been very grateful to our teachers' support for that. And in terms of the benefits, is it still going to be a part of the continuous professional development uh, accredited time for teachers? Yes, uh, our CPDs are because Pathlight is a social partner of the Ministry of Education. Yeah. We we did sign our memorandum of agreement back in 2019. We are, all of our workshops are CPD credited. So teachers can earn up to 10 CPD hours if they attend our sessions um, in that first week of July. Yeah. Good. And um, shifting gears a little bit, perhaps Beatrice, you can give some of your uh, perspective as a trainer, how it's been preparing for um, all of these things over the past few months. Okay, sure. Good morning, Belize. Good morning, Ms. Marlene and Mr. Gabby. Um, just a brief um, history about Patlight. Patlight is a non-profit organization whose mantra is aimed to provide hope and transformation of our education system. As a member of the TTP department, as a teacher trainer, um, we carry out two types of training. We do school-based training and individual-based training. School-based training is where you would find schools that would register with us 
throughout the year. And as a trainer, I would, um, along with the team, we would go into the schools, we would do a um, pre-assessment with the teachers and the students, um, diagnostic assessment to find out where the students are, what their level of readiness is as it pertains to reading and math literacy. And then we will take, we would um, administer our intervention. As it relates to individual based um, assessment or um, training, we do that every Friday afternoon from 1 to 5 p.m. Sometimes our training extends up to 6 p.m. on a Friday afternoon, and we have a large pool of teachers who would register. We offer training sessions from assessment, how you write um, test, uh, test items such as um, fill in the blanks, true and false, matching test items, problems, problem solving items. We look at classroom management. We look at discipline plan to create more conducive environment for our teachers and students. Um, we look at coping mechanism for teachers and students as they participate in online and online activities. The training so far has been a very rewarding experience. It's a very um, transformative um, way to teach online and to interact with teachers and students from around the country. I must say that Partly International is a pioneer organization in training teachers. From the onset of COVID-19, we recognize the need that, okay, we cannot go into the classroom, into the physical um, structures to engage with our teachers one-on-one -on -one and with our students. And so overnight, like what Ms. Godfrey um, reiterated, we had to adopt and show some level of um, versatility yeah. with the way we are able to teach. And so overnight, I must say, Ms. Marlene, as trainers, myself, Ms. Godfrey, Ms. Ruiz, we had to start doing self-directed learning for ourselves. We had to apply um, how, we had to train ourselves to see how best we can understand the different online modalities yeah. and then identify yeah. which one would work best for our um, teachers that we, we train almost on a daily basis. So far, the teachers love um, the online training. They, they, the professional development that we are offering is on parallel to what has been offered in this country. Um, we required our participants, it doesn't matter what the topic is, but each participant has to produce a tangible product at the end of each training. So it's no longer, we're just offering professional development when you go in and sit, occupy space, and you might just respond to one or two questions. Our professional development entails teachers working in breakout room sessions. Mm -hmm. They have to um, collaborate with their peers from around the country, getting to know each other. So they're building, they're networking. We're building a community of learners. In addition, our training um, mandates that our teachers not only collaborate, but they have to upload um, particular documents to their schools, Google Drive, and as trainers, we go in um, download this document, we vet what the teachers have submitted, and then those documents are then passed over to um, TEDS, yes, for quality assurance of the training and the delivery that we have done. So it has been a resounding success so far with the online platform that we have been using at Partlight. It's really great to hear, um, I think, because of, of two reasons. One, because we know that people, um, that teachers um, are always looking for opportunities to learn how to be uh, better with their students or to offer more to their students, um, but also because it, it's kind of a quick adaptation to uh, the new realities that we're facing. And that's the question I wanted to ask because I think that what, what happened as of March 20th was um, everyone moved online and uh, some children were sent home with work and there was an assumption that parents had the time or even the know-how how to work with the kids. And, you know, it was, a, it was an experiment of sorts. There were some kids, I know, because um, I've been asking around with parents who really adjusted well to online learning. There were some teachers who loved teaching online. And there were some who struggled. And, and we know the varying learning styles and teaching styles that may exist. So how have you been able to help uh, teachers go through this transition to develop their own personal online teaching style and recognize that the teacher, that the students are also receptive? Yeah, and that's a great question, Marlene. Um, I must say, when we offered, when we decided to offer our independent sessions on Friday to teachers, one of the things we knew teachers needed were immediate skills in digital teaching. Yeah learning to operate different platforms, learning to use different online tools for student engagement. Uh, the virtual classroom is very different than a physical classroom. 
And one of the things we have always encouraged our teachers to consider is the attitude you bring to your virtual classroom. It's also a physical presence, a social presence, a physical presence, yes, because you need to show up for your online class, but it's also a social presence. So give your students time to have a, a little bit of social interactions when you're with them. Have a space on your have a space in your classroom that is very organized, very visually appealing. We always encourage our teachers to when they're when they're working with students online, very important to set. Uh, expectations and uh, boundaries because because the phone and the computer and the device is right in your hands yeah. a lot of people feel yeah. like it's okay to just send a message anytime because it's so fast and easy to do mm -hmm. and a lot of times we've heard teachers are teachers sometimes have the challenge that they are too too connected yeah. that they yeah. don't you know they're they're always responding to students messages and concerns and We've let teachers know one of the things you need to do is to set those boundaries. Yeah. You need to let your students know when you're going to respond to messages, that you are going to respond to messages, but there's going to be a time frame to do that. We also encourage teachers to, when they're setting up their online class, to, to take their children, to take their students through navigating their classroom. Students are also learning as much as teachers. Students are also anxious as much as teachers are. They are also working from home. And so one of the things we've been saying in our training session is we've got to give each other the grace that the learning will take place. There are going to be challenges. Some of us will be knocked off because the internet isn't always very stable. Yeah. Sometimes our devices don't work the way we want them to. And so these are some of the, the tips and tricks that we've been offering to our teachers as they've been using our sessions, as, they, as they've been logging into our sessions. Miss Beatrice said a very great point um, in that our our training online has been very successful but what has actually added to that success is that for every single training that teachers have been engaged with in with pathlight we actually take them through a navigation session so if we're using zoom we teach the teachers before they even begin to work with us we teach them all the different tools they need to do they, they need to be able to use and uh, manipulate on their device so that they can participate in um, actively uh, interactively with their partners with their with their colleagues, with us on as speakers and hosts of the training session. And I must say teachers are very grateful for that. We've offered digital teaching in using Google Classroom, using Zoom. Um, there's so many other tools I can go on and on oh, yeah. any and all the things that we've been um, incorporating into our training sessions. And then when teachers see it for the first time, they're like, I like that tool. How did you all learn to do that? So, <laughs> you know, things like screencasting and and editing a video in PowerPoint, making your PowerPoint into a movie, um, simulating exercises, creating your YouTube channel, creating a podcast. Yeah. These are all tools that we've been we've been we've been embracing ourselves as as trainers as well. But we've also been helping teachers to understand. And I can tell you that schools now have been turning to Pathlight as an as an avenue as a partner to help them in setting up some of these in intervention programs that they're going to have to set up come the 10th of august and so we are working now with high schools in trying to get uh what we call a hybrid learning system set up for their school so that they can offer both online as well as face to face because some schools will have to do a shift system when they go back in august yep. for all the social yeah. distancing purposes and trying to maintain those measures and so now they're looking to part like because they've had the experience mm -hmm. with us working online to help them set up these uh, online blended modalities so that they can all still offer online as well as face to face mm -hmm. and i can see, i can foresee that patlight will be as miss beatrice alluded to patlight is going to be a pioneer in virtual teaching and virtual mm -hmm. learning and, and, and i think um, this is this is a key area because we're all looking forward very optimistically and i think you know people want the kids to go back to school and we've heard quite a bit of the plans being made social distancing um you know um shift schedules but there may come a time where the kids may have to go back home and continue to learn again that's not it's not impossible um that that scenario may happen and so if we prepare now we're better equipped I've been fascinated at some of the innovation that I've seen from teachers over that first uh, school closure. And the dedication was amazing. It's, they were videoing on their phones and, yep. and sending out stuff to the parents of preschoolers to do with the kids. Um, and and they, were, they were 
group chats with how to get through schoolwork. Tell me about your experience talking with the teachers. How, we've talked about how the students adjust. How have the teachers been adjusting? Ms. Beatrice, you want to take on okay. that one? Sure, Ms. Marlene, um, thanks for asking that question. I must say since the start of COVID and this pandemic, uh, many teachers have expressed the sentiment that they're feeling anxiety, high levels of stress, they're feeling apprehension and fear regarding transitioning to the new norm and embracing online platforms. What we do with our training is that when we plan, and it takes a considerable amount of time doing research before we even go into the delivery of sharing the content and activities with the teachers. We make our training as practical and tangible. So whenever teachers participate in our session, they're walking away with a survival toolkit, I would call it, mm -hmm. with um, tips and tricks, tips and um, tips and tricks that when they go back into the classroom, whether it is synchronous or asynchronous, those teachers will be able to survive because they, many of them are afraid. They are afraid of making mistakes using the Zoom features. They are afraid of um, teaching the wrong content because they are using new online platforms. And so like what Ms. Um, Consuelo reiterated, we have mentioned to our teachers, take time, pace yourself, always have a backup plan, like you have your plan A, but when you go into delivery of that lesson, have a plan B, Est establish a consultation period for your parents as well as your students because if you find that you're you're working online and a student doesn't doesn't check into that google classroom or whatever platform you're using you have to find a way to reach that student to ensure that student is um find out what the circumstances are is it internet connectivity that is an issue is the student lacking in some um, resource make connection establish relationship we also tell our teachers that they have to ensure that they're taking time to to protect their health because self-care is very important during this time many of our teachers have expressed high levels of stress like i mentioned before yeah. also mentioned to our teachers as they train and teach minimize distraction online teaching if you want to call it online teaching e-learning distant education is the same type of learning that goes on in the classroom just that the teacher is at home and the students in a, is, is in a working from another environment. And the same quality of teaching is warranted of that practitioner. We demand or expect our teachers to, to demonstrate high levels of um, teaching, ensuring, checking that students are learning. So we tell them as you teach, you chunk your lesson, chunk your content, check every 10 to 15 minutes, probe your students, question and answer segment, teach again, and then you give feedback to your students. So you're, you're not only establishing relationship with your students, but you're also ensuring that they're learning what you're transmitting during your online session. All right. So let's just talk about uh, the details of the conference. Do you still have space left for people to sign up? <laughs> <laughs> yes, we do have space left. Some yeah. sessions are almost at the point of closing because after um, 50 seats have been filled up for a session, we have to close it because that's the limit that we're going to be starting off. We are all excited about the conference, but at the same time, we want to make sure that our trainers are not overwhelmed yeah. by too many teachers um, on a Zoom session because using Zoom has its own challenges and for many of these trainers while they are very familiar with zoom and we're providing them with all the training to be able to navigate it well and there will be a moderator in the room to assist them with the tech support and everything we still want it to be engaging we want it to be interactive and we want teachers to find that even though they're on a computer screen and they're seeing all other screens on their devices it is still a meaningful experience that they can take away and learn and, and, and take back into their classroom whether it be physical or online yeah so uh, um, and you also have to schedule online as well yes we do I, am i allowed to screen share am i yes. can i i okay, believe perfect. you can Let me, show us the oh, zoom course, skills yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, I don't think it's allowing me to screen share, but I did. Uh, they, we do have a registration. We do have a web page okay. um, available in, at our pathlight.org slash TTC. All our information. And, and Marlene, I would want to say something. Normally, when we come to you every time this year to talk about the conference, we show up a little flyer with some pictures. Yeah. But this yeah. year, for the first time, our TTC has its own web page. Okay. And it has the history of the TTC. It has pictures from our last year's conference. It has all the registration links. It has all our presenters' information. So if you want to find out about the presenter and the session that they're presenting, there's a biography, a photograph, 
about the trainer that will be offering those sessions. Um, there is also uh, information about payment, banking, you know, banking online with all the different banks. We have all that information there on our website. There is also the schedule. So if teachers want to know what the schedule will look like virtually, there's a schedule that's posted on our website. But for the first time, we actually have a, a great web page that's developed that was developed by our uh, web page developer, Mr. Ryan, over there in the U.S. So and he did an ex excellent job in getting that up and running for us. So the, the website is? Uh, it's pathlight.org slash TTC. Excellent. Okay. Well, Consuelo yes. and Beatrice, thank you for telling us about the work that you have been doing. Um, we we do hope that uh, you're going to have uh, more teachers signing up over the summer to participate, not just to earn the CPD hours, uh, but to get themselves equipped to uh, get used to this new way of learning that uh, both teachers and students are adjusting to. Thank you. Yes, thank you so much. And, and thank you to Gavin and Marlene for having us. I would like to just uh, let teachers know that our spaces are available. We are going to close our links on the 1st of July. Payment deadline is the 1st of July. It's only $5 a day, Marlene, for our conference. So um, we try to keep it within reason for our teachers. And, and, yeah. and we must say thanks to our donors who have really helped us. One Voice for Change, MindSpark Learning. Uh, Pathlight International, I must say that they have been really good at, at providing the support we need to get this conference off the ground. I would like to say thank you to um, all the trainers that will be partaking in the sessions and to each and every one of those teachers who have signed up to be a part of our session. Um, and to, to our moderators, Mr. Andre Lopez, Mr. Troy Coleman, Ms. Beatrice Jaban, and Ms. Maggie Ruiz, who will be the ones that will be providing all the tech support for us at the conference. So I must say thank you to all those folks and to uh, open your eyes for hosting us and for allowing us to have a little voice here this morning with regards to our conference and our school-based training. So we really look forward to working with teachers. Teachers, we hope to see you online this summer. Uh, remember, our space is limited, so sign up as soon as possible. And thank you again, uh, Marlene and Gavin. And thank, thank you. you to Mr. Gavin. Yeah. All, right. All right, and with that, we shift gears. Into our final conversation, we're going to be joined by a musical guest, Pupa Curly, who is going to be debuting his new music video. So please stay tuned. After, uh, we'll be back after the break.